how are you guys doing and welcome to another video of the xml port series and we are proceeding from where we left the last video is where we exported the comma separated value format and we were able to preview it in excel via the click file open and we were able to preview it we created the xml port sample table for those who are just watching this video and uh, this table contains the number description amount the date inserted and the inserted by which were automatically inserted via the on insert trigger and their properties are set um, the editable property was set to false in this video we are going to export the via the xml format because we exported the variable text format so we are going to export the xml port xml format and in the xml port xml format we basically need first of all we need to define the structure of our export remember we said that the xml port contains text elements text attributes table elements field elements and field attributes we earlier said that the xml uh, contrary to the html format which has predefined tags in the xml we can define our own tags and this can be done using the field elements or even text elements so definitely the xml contains one root node you can look at the first video where we looked at how the xml is structured but we are sticking to this table we just like to export this table in xml format and we will describe this part the field one two three as the general tab and then the field four and five as the logs so we will nest the attributes in that format and see how it goes as usual we are using one file to create everything so in this file we will definitely use our snippet which is definitely the txml port snippet we hit control space for us to get um uh the number automatically then um which is generated by the azl dev tools automatically and we can call it um let's say um okay it's xml port sample that's the name of the table uh xml export <laughs> oh my god naming is it is tough i don't know if this name is is relevant but yeah there we are let's name it that way and we don't need the actions for request page and the request page so we'll just clear this and then begin we want it to be as clean as possible so we in our schema we have the root node and our root node we will name it as xml format because we are using the xml format the default format is xml but we would like to explicitly define the format to be xml then we can move forward the property schema cannot be used in this context and also um, the text element let me see what's happening here I don't know if they were close to each other. Let me see. The property schema cannot be used in this context. 
the intelligence was loading because I didn't see any problem with having that property. There we are. Now we have our format as XML, our text element, um, which is the root node. This is the root node. We have named it the XML format. Then we need to have our source table. Where are we getting the 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 data source from? Our data is coming from the XML port sample table, and it's having some squiggly lines uh, saying that it's not valid. But uh, we'll look at it in a few. Let me just remove this. Should be valid either way. The XML port sample. So this is the name, and this is the um, uh, the table itself, the table name. So it's defining some field attributes. But let me remove everything so that we can start from scratch. So we will define a field element, a field element of system ID. And we'll say uh, that we need the system ID. The system ID is a unique identifier for each record. So let's export the unique identifier of each um, record. So the field element will define a new field element of the XML port. So we'll see what this means, the system ID. When we say that we need a field element of the system ID, we are basically sort of saying that we need the system ID and the value will be here when we say that we need a field element. This is what we are trying to define. Then we can say now we need to group our elements with a general text element. Then within the general text element, we will have our field element of number which will get the number as the uh, it's supposed to be code, not number. The the way the uh, L go for GitHub is trying to define it for me. Come on, come on. I'm using too much intelligence. It's supposed to be code. Oh, it's still number. <laughs> OK, I'm used to having code. So it's the number, but now the number dot so we are nesting this attribute within the we are nesting this attribute within the general so within the number then we can have another field element of the description which has auto completed for us and then within the number, let's say within the, our number, we can have a field attribute of, say, the amount. So what we, what we are saying is like we are saying we're having a number, and then we are saying amount is equals to 1, and then the number is 1, maybe the number is 100, zero zero, and then we close the number. So this is what we are trying to say. So the attribute is describing this number. So that is how the field attribute will be described. Then we are done with our text element, which is nesting the nodes. And then we are having another text element for the logs. So within this text element, we'll basically have <laughs> our field element for date inserted and inserted by, which is autocompleting. But now this one should not be having some spaces. It should be a name, property name. And there we are. So we have created our XML format from scratch 
and uh, so what we have done is we have said that our format is XML. We have defined the root node within our um, schema. Then um, within the root node, we, which we have named XML format, we have our table element, which will basically fetch from the database. A table element will basically fetch information from the database, and it's fetching from the XML port sample table. Then we have our field element, which is also fetching from the database. A text element not related to the database, but used to create a nested root, a nested node for our uh, for our formatting information. We have a field element for the number and we have described that number with the amount. So we have uh, described. So we'd rather have the description as a field attribute and the amount outside because it will make more sense. And this one as a field element and this one as a field attribute. So that it it can be, we will have it describing the number, because the attribute will be within the uh, the the XML tag. And then we have another grouping for the logs. So our logs with the date inserted inserted by. We have the system inserted by system inserted that I don't know. We can even have an attribute for that. So the only thing remaining is to have this XML port sample XML export. That's a weird name. We can add it to our processing area. And uh, we just give it an auction. Come on, what am I doing? So that's it. Just copy this and... Uh, have this XML export. Then we will definitely just call this. There will be no action. We run the object as so let's test. Let's test and see the result of our processing. What kind of result are we going to get when we try and export our XML port sample table? Our table contains the number, description, an amount, and logs for that inserted. We have basically created the fields in our own way. And we'd like to see how it will unfold. So the, the default page that is loading in the launch.json file is that. And here is our XML export. We didn't explicitly, again, specify the file to be an import. And here is our file after the export. So we have it specifying the versions and all that. So. We said that the root node is XML format. And when you go to the end, we'll find that that is the root node. Then we do have the XML port sample. And these are the child nodes. OK, you can call it the parent node. And then because we have now, we'll be knowing that for each XML port, this is where we have, uh, let's try and preview it. So you can see that we have the XML port format as the root node. Then we have several children, all containing several XML port samples with details. So this is our table. And we can see that we have the system ID, and then we have another nested child, that is the general. The general is containing the number and the amount. Then we have the logs containing the date inserted and the inserted by. 
and we have described the number using the attribute. So when we were defining the attribute right here, when you say that we are defining, we are describing this as an attribute, we were basically having uh, this number in this in this format. So this is the format in which we'll be having um, the attributes defined. So this is actually a way, once you master how to create an XML file and uh, using the, the attributes and the elements, it actually encapsulates creating the file in a very easy way. So because you can describe, you can have as many attributes as possible, you can have the elements here, you can group them in whichever way you have, you can have the root nodes and the child nodes, you can be able to visualize them in a very good way and know this is the general, this is the number, this is what, and, uh, in, and you can see that this uh, format is really giving us the, um, the tree view. This is the tree view that we are having from our XML file. And this is the data we have. All the data is contained in this simple file. And if you have another data source that can be able to consume this data, then this data can be imported back to that particular data source if this was the format that they wanted the data, the, the data in. So in the next video, we'll look at how to import an XML format um, data. And if you look at workflows, at times you can export an XML template and re-import it back in form of um, uh, uh, XML data, even permissions. They are used heavily in Business Central to export and import in configuration packages and all that. So we'll use our own example, the same example that you have been using, and import the XML data, okay, using the XML format data into our XML um, port. So I'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss the next one.